first and foremost, we have to recognize that women have an absolutely critical role to play uh, if Afghanistan is going to be stabilized, prosperous, uh, and peaceful. You know, so much happens through experience, and when there's positive experience, obviously men who may have not thought their women should uh, play a role uh, in starting a business become very proud of the role their wives are playing. They've got income in their families that they didn't have before. Their life is better in every way. Uh, I had mentioned in, in the discussion prior to our sitting down together uh, that where religious leaders have adopted schools or encouraged uh, the village to, to send women off to midwifery uh, training programs, that validation has made all the difference in cultural changes taking place. If women are not at the table, uh, if they're going to be silenced or they're going to be marginalized, if they're not going to share in the power that is represented in the decisions that go forward, that peace and its potential uh, will not be sustained. Uh, it's as simple as that. We have seen over so many years now uh, that when there isn't this kind of engagement by the women who in most societies are half the population if not more as in Afghanistan, who bring the experiences of life, who know what needs to be addressed so that there can be a genuine uh, coming together to go forward in a way that will create that kind of stability. If those considerations are not on the table, it is not likely that the agreement will last. And that's why we see, it's one of the reasons we see so many peace agreements adopted and so many of the conflicts recurring. So I think to ensure that the investment that's been made all of these years, uh, this is not a favor to women. This is a favor to everybody, particularly the Afghan people, to have the kind of future they want.